right friends welcome back to learning space most important series strategy for new india at 75 that means india is to be transformed radically by 2022 why because 2022 is going to be the year we would be celebrating 75 years of independence by 2022 so therefore the prime minister's vision is new india and to radically transform India, what are the steps required? That is about this strategy for new India at 75 by Niti Ayuk. Right. So, the purpose of strategy for new India at 75 is basically to define clear objectives by 2022-23, what is to be done? And these objectives are categorized into 41 sectors and 4 sections. All these 41 sectors are categorized into four sections. The four sections are, one is drivers, second one is infrastructure, third one is inclusion, fourth one is governance. And for all these sections, each and every sector is analyzed, right? So, 41 areas are analyzed with focus on what is the progress already made or you can say, what is the present scenario? Second one is, what are the challenges that remain? Third one is, what are the constraints? Then, what is the way forward? What is to be done? So, like that, 41 areas bifurcated into four sections. They will be discussed in detail and we are going to deliberate all the 41 sectors in detail which are bifurcated into four sections. Right. And please don't forget, the Prime Minister gave a call for Sankalp Se Siddhi, that is clarion call. What is the meaning of clarion call? That means, that is loud and clear call to make or you can say to transform India by 2022, that is new India. The Prime Minister's call is new India by 2022. Please replicate what happened in 1942. 1942 quit India and 1947 we got independence. Similarly, 2017 call for new India and 2022 we have to achieve it. Right friends, before going into each and every sector, let us have a glance at drivers. Right, the first one. I have already told you four sections. Out of the four sections, the first one is drivers. Under drivers, what are the important key steps required? First one is increase the investment expenditure. If investment expenditure is increased, then it will create assets, capital assets. When capital assets are created, what will happen? Then it will be benefiting the future generations. For future generations, we should create more assets, not more debt, right? That is the most important aspect. What father should do for his son? Father should create more capital assets, but not borrowings. The borrowings should not be inherited by the son. Son should be happy with the capital created by the father. Father should create more assets like land, buildings for his son so that he can live happily. That's why the government's intention is create more capital assets so that it will benefit the future generations of the country, right? So, for that purpose, increase gross fixed capital formation. That is nothing but investment expenditure. At present, it is around 29% or so. Please increase it to 36% by 2022-23. Second one is agripreneurs, farmers. That means farmers or agriculture sector should be integrated with entrepreneurship. Then what will happen? Then value addition will be created. You need not sell tomatoes. You can sell tomato juice, right? So that farmers will get more. So give thrust to the entrepreneurship of the agriculture sector, then zero budget natural farming, then maximum employment creation and reduce the labor loss or you can say codify the labor loss, right. Then second one is infrastructure, create rail development authority. Please don't forget we are discussing in brief four sections. After this, we will have each and every section separately. 
right so here we are discussing four sections now in brief and after this we are going to deliberate in eight modules all the 41 sectors in detail please do not worry this is rail development authority why why it is required because the present day pricing is having a cross subsidy what is a cross subsidy cross subsidy means assume a situation here the present situation in our country is suburban trains go to chennai by 5 rupees you can travel up to 19 kilometers or so so that means it is having subsidy element the passenger fares are less freight fares are high because of that freight traffic is losing competitiveness because of that more and more freight is going to the road so therefore this type of cross subsidy is to be eliminated cross subsidy that is there in the electricity sector also so cross subsidies are more dangerous they will stifle the growth of particular sectors so therefore here so as to have transparent mechanism rail development authority with regard to the transparent pricing mechanism then share of the freight transported by coastal shipping coastal shipping what is it if the freight is to be moved from say Paradeep to Visakhapatnam. Why it is required to go by road? Let it go by coastal shipping through the Bay of Bengal route. Right? Then national waterways. 111 national waterways are there. Then Bharatnet program. It is expected to be completed by 2019. And look at last mile connectivity to each and every individual village. Right? Then inclusion. Very important. Right? So the growth should grow so the growth should go to all the persons or you can say the benefits of growth the benefits of growth should have element of equity very very important right so all the persons should have the opportunity to enjoy the fruits of growth and that is possible only when we concentrate on health education right and for that here health and wellness centers 150000 right i all of you are familiar with the aishman bharat program then one more point is atal tinkering labs that is to foster creativity in the young brains atal tinkering labs is the initiative of niti ayog and 10000 atal tinkering labs by 2020 then affordable housing so as to ensure equity that means the benefits should go to the entire cross sections of population. The benefits of growth should not be cornered by only rich persons, only above middle class persons. It should go to all the sections of society. Keeping that in mind, equity is very important word. That means everyone is treated fairly and equally. Or you can say equity in the perspective of economy means the fruits of growth should be enjoyed by all focus on northeastern region then if you look at governance right implement the recommendations of second arc we are going to deliberate each and every sector please do not bother right or you can say please concentrate when we are discussing each and every sector separately we are going to deliberate all 41 sectors in eight modules then new autonomous body arbitration council of india very important because in our country, in fact, the biggest problem is commercial disputes. Commercial disputes are being dragged for a number of years. So, what is important is a good arbitration mechanism must be there. Right. So, scope of Swachh Bharat mission is to be increased and Swachh Bharat mission is to be sustained. So, these are the important aspects when one looks at governance. Right, friends, this is brief about four sections. Let us start with the first sector. Most important sector, we are going to concentrate only on this sector, that is growth, right? So, this comes under drivers, right? So, as I have already told you, it is divided into four sections. And in the first section, that is drivers, the first one is growth. Right. We are going to deliberate all 41. Right. Today we are going to deliberate only on growth because this is the most important aspect and it requires thorough deliberation for around 20 to 30 minutes. Right. So, GDP growth accelerated 8% average 
from 2018 to 2023. Have you glanced at it? What is average GDP growth? Here, real GDP growth average during the past 4-5 years is around 7.6% and prior to that, it was 6.7%. This is after the revision of the figures recently by the union government. After the revision of the figures, here if you see during the past 10 years, here during the past 5 years, it is 7.6% and prior to that, 6.7%. And now, the Niti Aayog strategy paper says, take it to average of 8%. Right? Then second one is, this will raise the economy in real terms. What is our real economy? 2.7 trillion dollars. This will go to 4 trillion dollars by 2022-23. And the goal is also there, one more point, to reach 9 to 10 percent by 2022-23. That means average 8 percent up to 2022-23. And not only that, to reach 9 to 10 percent by 2022-23 right and investment rate that is gross fixed capital formation that is nothing but investment rate that should go from 29 percent to 36 percent of gdp previously sometime back it was around 35 percent or so it came down right have you glanced at it in fact if you go back 2014-15 it was more than 30 percent later on it came down and it is now increasing. It is now around 29.5%. If you see 2018-19, so the goal of Niti Aayog paper is to reach 36% by 2022-23 investment expenditure. And if you go back, it was much higher. If you go further back, it was much higher. It was around 35% or so. Now Niti Aayog paper says, Please take it to 36% by 2022-23. I have already told you, gross fixed capital formation is nothing but investment expenditure. And if it is high, what happens? It leads to more creation of the assets, more creation of the assets, more expressways, more factories, right? Like that, it will lead to asset creation. When asset creation is there, what happens? Jobs will be created economy will grow and when asset creation is there, it will benefit the future generations. Let me tell you with one example, if you purchase a house, it will generate rent every year, every month. If you purchase land, it will generate lease every year, right? So therefore, capital asset is created, then what happens? Then it will generate regular income here on similar lines. If capital assets are created, it will generate the income at the same time jobs for the future generations. Right, friends? Then export of goods and services. And in 2017-18, if you take goods and services exports, $478 billion. Out of this $478 billion, around 300 is goods. Around 300 is goods. Don't go by exact figures. I am telling roughly 300 goods, around 170 or so services. And the goal is to reach $800 billion by 2223. And for increasing exports and for increasing the investment expenditure, what is to be done? All these things are mentioned here. So we discussed about objectives. Let us look at present scenario. Very important. What is the present scenario? First, we looked at what are the objectives. Objectives are very clear. GDP growth of 8% average. Second is to reach this 9 to 10% by 2020 to 23. Then next one is this 29% to 36% is to be increased when one looks at cross fixed capital formation. And the fourth important objective is increase goods and services from 478 to 800 billion dollars by 2022 23 these are the objectives objectives are clear then the next one is what is the present scenario right after that what are the constraints after that what is the way forward like that each and every sector is discussed in the paper right
so here present scenario the share of manufacturing in india's gdp this is the worrying point the share of manufacturing in india's gdp in fact it is almost stagnant since liberalization since 1991 it is almost stagnant at around 16 17% or so right so this is not increased in any significant measure in the quarter century after economic liberalization most important and manufacturing share that is to be increased otherwise people are shifting from agriculture to the low cost services or you can say low wage services sector in urban areas right the need of the hour is the manufacturing sector the share of manufacturing in the total gdp is to be increased and unfortunate aspect is it has not increased in any significant measure in the quarter century after economic liberalization it is hovering around 16 17 16 17 something like that right and the growth is the highest one more unfortunate aspect here the first drawback is for the past 25 years or so the share of the manufacturing in the overall gdp is stagnant almost you can say slight increase or you can say stagnant it is around 16 to 17% it is supposed to be around 25% 30% for a country like india but it is stagnant at around 16 17% that is the first drawback second drawback is the growth is the highest in sectors where they are capital intensive not labor intensive very very important point even from your preliminary perspective also here the growth in the manufacturing is highest in the sectors which are capital intensive that means here you see car manufacturing automobiles this is capital intensive job creation may be less similarly pharmaceuticals this is capital intensive and the growth is high in capital intensive sectors like automobiles and pharmaceuticals but not in the other sectors where labor intensive is there or you can say it is not as in fact in comparison to the capital intensive in a nutshell i would like to tell you the growth in the manufacturing is more in the capital intensive like automobiles pharmaceuticals but not that much in the labor intensive sectors if the growth is more in the labor intensive sectors more and more jobs will be created but unfortunately the growth is more in the capital intensive sectors what are the drawbacks here you see land and labor laws state governments have to do a lot as far as land is concerned right and other important aspect is that means we have discussed about two negative aspects right and the third positive aspect let us say here positive news is growth is achieved with strong macro economic fundamentals low rate of inflation and falling fiscal deficit right so strong macro economic fundamentals are there this is the strong point right and constraints in fact the paper says the constraints are discussed in various sectors which we are going to deliberate in future right so let us leave this constraint part here let us look at what is the way forward first and the foremost how to raise the investment rate to 36% we have seen 29% to 36% how to raise it only way to raise it is increase the tax to gdp ratio have you glanced at it what is the tax to gdp ratio please look at it it is very very important from your preliminary perspective also this direct tax indirect tax how it is moving in recent times very very important now there is a divergence in between it is closed have you glanced at it some intelligent may question may be there in the preliminary examination that is one aspect second aspect is gross tax receipts if you see for central government they are increasing no doubt that means both direct and indirect taxes put together they are increasing no doubt and expected to be 12.1% and if you put states and center together if you put states and center together they are around 17 to 18% or you can say around 
percentile, it is 12.1 percent or you can say around 12 percent and if you put the states at the center, it is 17 to 18 percent, right? It is something 17 plus below 18 percent. So, therefore, it is between 17 and 18 percent. If you look at OECD countries, please don't forget, India is not member of OECD. So, for the OECD countries, it is 35 percent. So, there is a need to increase tax to GDP ratio, right? More and more direct taxes, that means direct taxes are to be increased. If you increase indirect taxes, then what happens? It may be regressive, right? You have to bring more and more people, more and more companies into the tax net. You have to bring more and more people into the tax net, right? So, here, if you look at the emerging economies like Brazil, it is 34 percent, South Africa 27 percent, China 22 percent, but ours it is around 17 percent. So, what is the goal? Goal is to increase tax GDP ratio to 22 percent by 20 to 23. At present, it is 17 percent states and center put together. It has to go to 22 percent, right? The paper says, because of the long term positive effects because of demonetization and GST, in fact, that will contribute positively to realize this dream, right? And efforts should be taken as per the paper to rationalize direct taxes, right? Direct taxes, rationalization is the need of the hour. And there are some exceptions to the corporates, they have to be looked at. Right. So, have a glance at it. This is very important. And states, what about states? I have already told you 12 percent by the center, 5 percent by the states and there is focus should be on the states. States should mobilize more and more resources or you can say states should mobilize its own taxes such as property tax and states should take specific steps to improve the administration of GST to increase the tax collections. These two things are required from the states, right? It should be the combined effort. Center only cannot do. States also should be with the center in the realization of 22 percent of GDP by 2020 to 23, right? Then compliance burden is to be used. What the paper says? By using technology, the interface between, very important, the interface between the income tax officials and the people should be reduced by using technology, automation and in that direction, government is already taking steps. One project is given at more than rupees 4000 crores, so as to prevent this interface between tax officials and the people. Why? Because when interface is there, corruption will be there. So, as to reduce corruption here, what is intended is here the interface should be removed by using technology and one more important aspect is yet present. This is the second point, yet present. The share of the center and the states put together, the share of the center and states put together in the total budget, the capital expenditure is 16 percent. If you take 100 rupees total budget, total budget is 100 rupees, both the states and center put together, out of it only 16 percent is on the capital expenditure. I already told you capital expenditure is creation of assets, but it is only 16 percent. And if you calculate the government's contribution to the investment expenditure, government's contribution to the investment expenditure, we have already seen total investment expenditure is around 29 percent of GDP. And if you look at government's contribution to the investment expenditure, it is 4 percent of GDP. Please do not confuse. The first one 16 percent is out of the total budgets of the center and the states, capital expenditure is only 16 percent. First and the foremost thing is governments should take steps to increase the capital expenditure. Right. How is it possible? It is possible because when the revenue deficit is reduced or you can say control revenue expenditure, revenue expenditure is to be controlled, increase the tax base, 
right increase the tax base right the state should look at mobilizing more taxes especially on property so mobilize more taxes reduce the revenue expenditure then with that what will happen when you do these two things then capital expenditure can be increased right at present if you see the contribution of both center and the states with regard to fixed capital formation or gfcf it is 4% of gdp please don't confuse between these two i already explained you clearly the first point talks about 16% when you look at the total budgets second point is when you look at the total gross fixed capital formation or investment expenditure we have already seen it is 29% and states and center put together the contribution is 4% out of 29% only 4% is by the center and the states it is to be increased to 7% reduce the revenue expenditure then increase the tax base mobilize more taxes so as to increase it from 4% to 7% and two areas which require higher public investment the two areas are housing and here infrastructure right housing is one area second one is infrastructure why housing because investment in housing especially in the urban areas that will have multiplier effect right because of that more and more job creation will be there and more and more impetus will be given to the economy then investment in physical infrastructure if you are constructing expressway then it will benefit the future generations and the drawbacks or you can say deficiencies in the infrastructure or bottlenecks in the infrastructure will be removed right friends these are important areas so two important areas for higher public investment then what about other measures required already the government has liberalized number of measures as far as fdi norms are concerned it says further liberalize fdi norms second important aspect is domestic savings can be complemented by attracting foreign investments in bonds and government securities so the paper says government securities and bonds there are certain limits at present you can relax some of the limits that means invite more and more foreign investment then government should continue to exit this is the area where the government is not that successful exiting the central public sector enterprises the niti aayog paper says exit from the unwanted public sector enterprises when the public sector enterprise is not strategic for the country's growth please exit it inefficient central public sector enterprises are more dangerous because they survive on the government support right and for larger cpscs the paper says the goal should be to create widely held companies by offloading the stake to the public to create entities where no single promoter has control right this is the important suggestion no single promoter has got control that means the control should be by multifarious authorities or you can say number of authorities or number of investors should be there no single investor should have the majority control then it says the operational efficiency will improve right then private investment in the infrastructure is to be in fact improved by the public private partnership mechanism based on the kelkar committee recommendations right friends how to ensure macro economic stability this is also important one is reduced debt to gdp ratio there are two advantages if reduced debt to gdp ratio is there first and the foremost is government's interest burden will be reduced and interest on the debt is nothing but revenue expenditure so i have already told you revenue expenditure is to be reduced and when debt is less right when the debt is reduced then interest outgo can be reduced if interest outgo is reduced revenue expenditure will reduce 
when revenue expenditure is reduced. Capital expenditure will increase. Asset creation will increase. So, this is the advantage of reducing the debt to GDP ratio. And second advantage is there, if the debt to GDP ratio is reduced, that means when the government's borrowing is reduced, then more and more money, this is the second advantage, more and more money will be available for the private sector to borrow. That means the private sector's borrowing costs will also reduce. More money will be available for the private sector to borrow. We have discussed previously, when the government borrows more and more money, it crowds out the private investment. So, as to prevent that, so two advantages are there with less debt to GDP ratio. We discussed both of them, right? Then, of course, inflation should be in the range of 4% plus or minus 2%. Then, efficient financial intermediation. Most important aspect is improve the risk assessment mechanism of the public sector banks. Very, very important. Here, non-performing assets is the real issue. So, greater use of financial markets to channel the savings and risk assessment framework is to be improved, right? Because we are suffering badly because of non-performing assets. Second important aspect is governance in the public sector banks is to be improved. For that, it said, independent and commercially driven bank boards, bank boards should have autonomy. They should be commercially driven, right? That means profitability. How much profit the bank is earning? Go by the profit, right? And then flexibility in human resources. Hire the persons at higher cost and judge their performance based on profit to the bank, right? So, therefore, the mechanism of judging the officers based on the profitability should be inculcated. And Gift City, please don't forget it is the International Financial Services Center at Gandhinagar in Gujarat. Gift City should be leveraged to push the financial sector liberalization, right? So, these are the important aspects when one looks at financial intermediation. What is financial intermediation? Financial intermediary. Please don't forget, banks are financial intermediaries and there are several problems pertaining to public sector banks and some of the private sector banks are also into problems. So, because of all these things, the paper recommended improve the governance, improve the risk assessment framework, right? Then, how to increase exports and manufacturing? Please don't forget, we are discussing about way forward for growth. It has got so many elements. Growth has got so many elements. We discussed so far how to increase the investment expenditure then how to maintain the macroeconomic stability, how to improve the financial intermediation, how to improve the banking structure especially, then how to increase exports and manufacturing. And the most important aspect is the export competitiveness is to be improved and the country is suffering because of several reasons. One is embedded taxes. I discussed previously embedded taxes. So, as to eliminate embedded taxes, please bring all the things into GST, especially when one looks at electricity, when one looks at petroleum products, please bring them into GST, then you can reduce the embedded taxes. Then the second is logistics costs are very high in our country. Logistics costs are to be reduced, then our exports will become globally competitive embedded taxes are to be reduced, then the competitiveness is to be improved by way of reducing the logistics sector or you can say the costs of the logistics sector. Then power tariff, this is another area we discussed about embedded taxes, we discussed about the logistics sector, third one is power tariff, power tariff just like railway tariff has got cross subsidy, cross subsidy means the pricing for the agriculture is highly subsidized. In some states, residential tariff is also subsidized. But it is causing damage to the industry. Industry costs are very high. Per unit cost of industry are very high. For agriculture, abysmally low. 
so this creates vitiates the atmosphere or you can say or you can say this type of cross subsidy is affecting the industrial competitiveness industries are not able to become competitive because of high logistics costs because of embedded taxes because of cross subsidy in the electricity tariff so remove all these things that's what the paper says so here we should complete delhi mumbai industrial corridor where it is having eight nodes in six states dolera is in gujarat don't forget so here we should complete delhi mumbai industrial corridor and dedicated freight corridors two corridors are coming complete them by 2020 to 23 and labor and land these two areas are to be solved in fact governments are failing in this land reforms labor reforms then all the state governments should implement fixed term employment fixed term employment now it is extended to all the central sectors but states have to implement it fixed term employment gives the flexibility to the company to hire and fire nowadays the era of temporary jobs you cannot avoid that so fixed term employment is one solution right then increase exports and manufacturing competitiveness another aspect is government established dedicated fund of rupees 5000 crore for enhancing 12 champion services sectors right so give thrust to these sectors as already announced by the government then strengthen the governance and the technical capabilities of the export promotion councils export promotion councils are working without any performance evaluation then one more point is closer economic integration within south asia at the same time southeast asian countries there are number of opportunities in the mclv countries what are these mclv countries mclv countries are the underdeveloped countries as far as the asian is concerned these are myanmar cambodia laos vietnam so the opportunities are there please grab the opportunities then use bimstech and bbin to facilitate seamless cross border movement of goods in the northeastern region right then employment generation and all the steps taken will result in employment generation and large part of the jobs are to be generated in labor intensive manufacturing sectors construction and services one more important aspect is the employability of the labor they are required to be enhanced by providing health education and skills this is the important aspect without health without education without skills it is not possible to reap the demographic dividend right friends the first topic what we have discussed is out of the 41 sectors the first one is pertaining to growth this is part of drivers so we completed in the first lecture with regard to growth in the drivers right friends next week we will discuss the remaining things in second to eighth modules so every week one module total it will come eight modules to cover entire strategy for new india at 75 by niti ayog please stay with learning space have a nice day thank you